So 96, as you know, we embarked on another groundbreaking adventure by taking a delegation to the UN Criminal Tribunal in The Hague. The chair of judges was Judge Gabriel Kirk MacDonald. Game changer, um, life changer for me. And again, in recollection now, gave life to the now established Sport for Development for Peace movement. Your recollections of that trip, and in particular, that criminal tribunal in which we had that mock trial, because again, when I think about it, the historic nature of it and the impact it was to have, I'll share with you later, but Max of Amsterdam, as the, one of the two highlights of that trip, and what greatly led to what now is the Soccer Wise program. If you remember, we took back graffiti. And if you look at Ajax Football Ground, it has graffiti within the stadium. And I know we had discussed that with them. But for, for a girl, for young teenage women, it wouldn't have been a highlight on any itinerary. But what did you sense from that whole experience? What, what really stood out for you? I think it was, it was the holistic approach to the way that they were tackling uh, youth and you know involving them into because it's like i think a lot of times people see sports as kind of there's a be all and end all which is a there's a winner and a loser and that's what they're trained for and the way that the ix approached it was like this was going to be a holistic approach to not just making this person singular person a great athlete but we are feeding these people, you know, and we are making sure their grades are great. And so you're talking about a, a whole and realized person. And that, that really stuck with me. And that program really stuck with me as to like, okay, the work that I'm doing here, that is it. And that's what you want for everybody is, you know, an opportunity, not just beyond sports. And that was really what stuck with me. And then when we went to the tribunal was, I mean, gosh, that building is the vastness of that building oh, and and the way that it you know from the phones that can you can hear what everyone's saying in their own language that really connects this idea of kind of how globally we can exist was really really because if you remember you had the high commissions of south africa holland and britain mm -hmm. they mary glenn hay myself obviously the delegation Yourself, Byron, Grief. There were at least three, five young ambassadors on that trip. Adrian, but if you remember, because Judge Kurt McDonald presided over that, mm -hmm. that debate, but it was a trial, if you remember, the for and the against mm -hmm. of young people's right, human right, to have sport mm -hmm. as a vehicle of social change. And again, I remember you stepping up, because you remember it was a strange setting. And if you look at what has happened since in that setting, yes. you'll realize the importance then of what has become now. But again, you didn't seem to be overawed by it, because that's what then attracted you to Gabriel Kirk McDonald. Yeah. And a dialogue started. Mm -hmm. And firstly, the debate, or the trial, the mock trial, and then what was to follow afterwards. How did that formulate in your mind? Did, was there a, a fixed idea? Or was it just what happened? I don't believe it was a fixed idea of recollection. I think it was absorbing everything I had seen from the LA trip, the IAX really stirred, what we were kind of doing here, um, what I know sports had meant to me personally. I think it was all of those things that just kind of fused and it just spoke from the heart. I don't think it was like, clear like these are the things I'm going to because it, it obviously there. resonated as you know yes. Gabriel Kirk McDonald was impressed with you all mm -hmm. you in particular there was a discussion you then shared your ambitions mm -hmm. and tell us the the next step in the actually journey. it was funny I you know I spoke about my ambition at that time was to go to university in Canada or the US and I was blessed that George McDonald had gone to Howard University undergrad law school and was on the board of trustees. Tell, tell people about Howard University because they, not many people understand its importance and significance with not only African-American culture and life, but in the global community on the basis of who become the alumni of Howard University. No, I mean, it's, 
it's often dubbed the Mecca um, in the U.S. for a reason. I mean, we're talking, we have a Caribbean Students Association, there's an African Students Association, there's a Haitian Students Association, there's an International Students Association, there's a Soul, which is kind of a black or Afro and African Latino organization. Of the four years I was at Howard, three of those years were spent with roommates from Sumba in, internationally. Um, we are talking the president of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, who originally Stokely Carmichael, I mean, doctors, lawyers, Toni Morrison. Um, it is just in every category that you can think of. There and is Chris a Howard is alumni. Uh, there's a, there's, Spike Lee. There's a, um, no, Spike no. went to Morehouse. Okay, Morehouse. Spike mm -hmm. is a Morehouse okay. man. Um, but every alumni you can think of in every Every, in every field is, is uh, that you can find a Howard, a Howard alumni person there um, and, and, you know, continues the most lawyers and doctors and um, in, our, in our law school and our, or we have our own med school and dentistry school. Um, it's really, really amazing. And, mm -hmm. and once you're a part of that, you know, anywhere I go in the U.S., and whether it's you know carrying a how to along my sweater or just speaking of it, people immediately um, either know of somebody. It's a kind of this unspoken family that you kind of belong to. Um, relationships that I've built business-wise out of it have been amazing friendships. It is truly one of the greatest experiences of my life. And so when she met me and said, "I think you'd be perfect." Howard alma mater material, um, I was like, you should apply. It's like, okay, great. And, uh, and didn't realize uh, how so, profound that experience was going, we, that, like, that one sentence was going to be to me, we, but yes. We knew on the return that that was going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time, and not many people will credit the youth charter again, in the, we had developed a very strong social enterprise philosophy and that cultural activity would engage you, sport and the arts. You'd be equipped with life skills and life resilient characteristics that ultimately had to be empowered with that employment or entrepreneurial opportunity. And I remember we had the back of that car park, the Manchester United um, home game income from our car park um, enterprise. And the challenges that you experienced once we got you, sir, Howard, of just how difficult it could be yeah. to share some of that experience with us. Because everyone thinks it's, in, in every successful point in your life, people tend to forget how hard the journey is. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they're like, they're, no, I'm telling you now. I remember those phone calls and yes. I used to go home to Jan and say, Jan, there's no way we can fail on this. And you, they say necessity is the mother of in, in, in innovation. And um, you did much to inspire the social entrepreneurial spirit, <laughs> believe me, because there were no way you were coming home. That right. was not an option. I know. I remember that when, uh, you know, I, I can't remember who it was that you had resourced to get me there that then did turned around and said, oh, we've reassessed our situation. We can't. We can't deliver on the money that we were supposed to. And, you know, we're going to pay half that sub first semester and good luck <laughs> and i just remember breaking at that point and i don't know after i got the phone with you calling my mom and I, she said you know it, we're going to figure it out we're going to figure it out and i just at that time just couldn't imagine and then you know we wrote a letter to the judge and she wrote a letter to the president of the university and they brought me in and as long as I maintained a, a 3.8, which is four A's and a B every semester, somehow, somehow money was found to, to get me through the entire... Do you remember they, remember they <laughs> locked yeah. you out of the library? Maybe <laughs> you phoned me once and they locked me out of the library and I went, oh, how, how do I fix this? <laughs> but that Manchester yeah. United car park enterprise, I would always say the club don't know this. They've set up their own foundation since then, but um, I just never realised, and as you came to realise, there's always a way, but in the end, having to meet that average, I think, gave you the all-important resilience that I think would just define you 
within the potential that you had because yeah. you were the new kid on the block and I know from my own son's um, freshman experience at Hampton it's no easy task so you were pretty much on it and as you know the same, once they shut the door they shut the door I hadn't realised <laughs> yes. what they meant when they shut the door yeah. they shut the door <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes not just figurative it is um, yeah no I got I got a three six one year that's right and um they called me in, and I was just like, this is not, this is, this is never happening again. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take out a loan, which now my friends laugh because as expensive as the U.S. American um, education system is, my loan is pales in comparison to what people's loans are. But at the time, you know, you always think that, you know, worst case scenario, those can always move back in with their parents somewhere in the U.S. The idea of owing another country money uh, when I don't have a, a roots or foundation there felt so intimidating. So although it was small, um, it still was something that I was very, very nervous about, about owing them. And so from there, I had straight A's the rest of the time I was I was at Howard. And um it was amazing because when graduation came around, uh, Judge McDonald, because she's on the board of trustees, well, she was on the, at the time, they all come back for, for commencement. And uh, I remember grabbing her and saying, I did it, I did it. Um, then there was this like gushing thank you to her for writing that letter and, and even just meeting me and saying, you know, I think you'd be perfect, Howard, alma mater material, recognizing something in me uh, at that UN and then going and you, and, and then not just recognizing, but then putting into action with that letter. And she said, I don't need a thank you. She just said, pay it forward. Absolutely. And that was all she required. So um, it was actually great because um, Howard had a campaign this past December, this past May for students that were about to graduate who had an outstanding bill that they couldn't, um, they couldn't pay off themselves. And so they had, you know, these great GPAs, but they just had, now they wouldn't be able to graduate. And so I was able to donate um, a large sum of money um, this year, the first time, and, uh, and help a number of people graduate who, had, uh, who needed that. 